Hi, Crafty Patty here. Today's video is on making mason jar cozies. Why? Well, how many times have you gone to a restaurant and you've seen people drinking out of mason jars? Quite often, because they're glass, you're not drinking them from plastic, and you've got a lid to carry it. So it's portable. You can get the straws and the lids for drinking for smoothies or whatever you want. And the good thing is, is that when you're drinking from this, a cold drink, you won't get the condensation on your hand because you've got the cozy or a hot drink because it's a hot glass, you're protected. So you can make it for gifts, use it for your crafts to store your pens, or how about a pretty little vase? Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how I made these. For your supplies, you obviously need a canning jar or a mason jar. You can choose to make the little tiny ones. This is a 250 milliliter jam jar. I won't be doing my tutorial on this one, but I will be giving you the pattern on how to do the smaller one in the description box below. You can choose to use a wide mouth, and this is a 500 ml jar. That will fit the pattern that we're gonna to do today. Or you can go for the other jar that has a little bit of a bend to the top here because it's coming up into the regular size lid. And this is also a 500 milliliter mason jar. This one here, I've added some accessories. This is a company called Enviro Lids, and I can write this um, website in the description below for you. It is a Canadian company, but they make the lids and they make the glass straws. And I can also um, put some links in for the US as well. You'll also need crochet hook. I'm using the loops and threads and I'm using the USG 4.5 milliliter. You'll also need a darning needle with a large eye and a pair of scissors to cut your yarn and of course your yarn. I'm finding that the best yarn to use is the Bernat Handicrafter Cotton. This particular ball of wool gave me enough to make the larger cozy and a smaller cozy. You'll need about 55 yards to make the large one. I've decided to use this particular cotton yarn because I just like the pattern of it. It looked really natural. And if you're wanting to use the same color, this actual color is called Potpourri Ombre. The last thing you'll need is a place marker. You can pick up or buy some crochet markers. You could use a safety pin. You could use a paper clip. But what I use is a bobby pin. I like it because it um, just flows through your stitch really well and it just clips on really easy and it's really easy to come off. And now for the magic circle for lefties, taking the end of your yarn, we're going to wrap around our first top two fingers. You're going to make an X, twist your fingers around, and you're going to hold that yarn with your baby finger. You're coming underneath, you're grabbing that yarn, and you're pulling it to the top. Okay? Now where you're holding on, to your yarn with your baby finger. You're gonna grab that yarn and you're gonna pull through and that's gonna lock in your magic circle. Let your fingers go. And then what we want is we want these strands, you want the two strands on this side. So you've got your end and you've got your magic circle. So take your yarn 
and get ready for your crochet. We're going to do eight single crochets inside the magic ring. So number one, we're going inside the magic ring, yarn around, through the magic ring, yarn around and pull through both. That's one single crochet. Here's number two. Number three. Four. Seven. And eight. So you've got eight single crochets inside the magic ring. Now you want to take your end of your yarn, hold on here, and we're going to just cinch that up. Don't cinch it up all the way, just keep it loose for now because we want it loose enough so we can get into our first stitch because we're going to go around again. If you're not sure where you are, you can count it out. This is stitch number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one will be a little bit tighter, so you'll just have to work through that first one. Alright, so you're through, you're going to wrap around, go through that stitch, wrap around and pull through. That's number one. And then find your next one, there's number two. And three. And four. And eight. So once you've gone around again for your eighth time, and now we're going to close up that circle. Taking your yarn and give it a really good pull, holding on to the top here and give it a nice good pull. You might even feel it like, there you go, I can just feel it. It just kind of clicked right in. You can pull fairly tightly. And now we've closed up our circle. So let's go in and put our marker, your paper clip or bobby pin or your crochet marker, and you're going to put it on that first stitch. You can see where my yarn is coming out, and we're going to go right in there, okay? There's our marker. Now we're going to start our increase row. So to make it easy to remember, on your odds you're not going to do an increase, but on your even you will. So here's where our yarn and our stitch has already gone through this one, so we know we're going to the next one. So that's number one. So just one single crochet. Now number two, in number two, an even one. So we're gonna do two. There's one and there's two into the same single crochet. Number three, we'll do one. Number four, we're gonna do two into the same stitch. And five is one. Six, we're going to do two. Seven is one. And right where we've put our marker is number eight. And we're going to do two into number eight. All right. Take your marker out. Lace it back onto that first stitch again, which is right here. All right, so now you should have 12 stitches. So if you count from here where the, your marker is, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so now we're gonna go around and we're going to increase again. So into that first stitch, we're going to do exactly the same as our 
last row. So on the odds will be one. And that's number two. So we're going to do two single crochets. And number three is one. And number four, two. And go all the way around doing one single crochet into one stitch and then two into the next one and this is an odd and where my marker is we will have two to finish up that row take your marker out and place back into that first stitch. Now you should have 18 stitches going around your round. And we're going to repeat that for one more round. Again, same as before. First stitch, one single crochet. Second one, we'll do two into the same stitch. And into my last stitch, which will be two. Take out my marker, place it back into the first stitch. Now you should have 27 stitches. I know that's weird that it doesn't work out even, but I looked at that several times and I'm sure it's 27. Now we're just going to start going into every one but only one single crochet into each single crochet all the way around and we're going to keep going around and around and we're going to do that approximately 18 to 20 times depending on the tension of your crochet so that's all we're doing now every row is just one cro single crochet into each stitch and just keep going around and then moving your marker so you know where you've started and stopped. It just helps you to figure out where you are. All right, so I'm on my last stitch. And that was my first round of just one single crochet into each stitch. So that's my first row. And like I said, it will be about anywhere from 17, 18, maybe 19 or 20, depending on how far you go up on your jar and what type of jar you're using. Okay, we'll see when I get to about 15 rows. So I've crocheted about 14 rows here. So I'm just gonna do a test with my jar. And you want it to fit nice and snug. That's the idea of it being cozy. So we know we still have to crochet uh, probably about another three or four rows. And we'll continue around with my crochets, my single crochets. So I've completed my last row tighter and you can see how it's kind of bending in a little bit. It'll still have enough stretch to go over the bottom of your jar, but this will really help to keep it nice and snug around the top part of that jar. So now to finish off, go into your next stitch, wrap around, pull through, and pull through again. Do that one more time. In wrap around, pull through, pull through. Now cut off the end of your yarn, leaving about six inches so you've got enough for sewing your end in. And your last stitch is just by pulling it through and all the way through. And now take your wide-eyed darning needle, thread your yarn, and we're just gonna weave in our ends. So just come into the bottom here and just go in and out. Pull it through one way. And then come back the other way and sew back. Yeah. 
and then cut off your end. And we've got the little tail on the inside here. So thread your needle again. And now I'm just looking for the original magic circle here. And I'm just going to thread it back through the magic circle. And then once you've come this way, I'm just going to go back to the next row and then thread it back through a few more of the stitches. And pull it tight and cut off your end. Now, the cozy has kind of two different looks to it. On this side, you can almost see a pattern of it going in a diagonal line. And on this side, it just, it looks more like just, uh, I don't know, whatever you call it, just rows and more going this way and holes. You can decide which look you like the best. I kind of like the diagonal line look. So I'm just going to take my jar now. And it'll be nice and snug, which is what you want. Bring that right up to the top. And because we've snugged up that last row, you've got a nice fitting cozy. And this one is ready. You can give it as a gift. You could open up the jar, fill it with tea bags or a hot chocolate mix or whatever you like. And uh, they are actually washable and dryable. So if they get dirty, just pop them in the wash and dryer. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more great videos.